momentarily at the T-minus nine minute and counting mark toward the launch of the shuttle Atlantis on mission STS-79. Four, three, two, one, mark. We're at T-minus nine minutes and counting. TLS auto sequence has been initiated. In just a few seconds, Pilot Wilcut will be flipping switches in the orbiter's crew cabin to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. T minus eight minutes and counting. And that's see that's complete. Double. In just a few seconds, the orbiter's access arm will be retracted away from the vehicle to the launch position. This arm is used by the crew to get into the crew module, and that arm can be re-extended within a few seconds if necessary. T-minus seven minutes and counting. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds. All systems aboard Atlantis continue to look good. Looking forward to an on time liftoff. This GRPS, that is complete. TLT, perform AP pre start. AP pre start should work. Coming up on the T minus six minute mark, Pilot Wilcutt is activating the auxiliary power units. That will actually come at the T-minus five minute mark. Uh, you see, we've got three gray contacts. Very good. These units provide hydraulic power to the orbiter. Coming up on the start of the auxiliary power units at the T minus five minute mark. TLS is go for orbiter AP start. TLT, OTC, start APUs. AP starts in work. CDR, reconfigure heaters. CDR, Roger. Heater reconfigure is complete. T-minus four minutes, 30 seconds. Three good APUs. Verify three good APUs. Thank you. Final purge of the main engines will begin, and the main engine valves will be opened and prepared for engine start.
T minus four minutes. A profile test of the orbiter's aero services has started. The flight control services are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. The nozzles on the three main engines are being gimbled and positioned for launch today. All systems are go for launch at this time, just a few minutes away from the 17th voyage of Atlantis with a crew of six. This will be the fourth shuttle flight that will dock with the Russian Mir space station. We will be pressurizing the external tank in the next few seconds. DLT, clear caution, warning, memory, verify no unexpected errors. And I can see that's a mark and there are no unexpected errors. Thank you, Jack. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is being retracted away from the top of the external tank. And the six member crew is about to embark on the first day of the planned 10 day flight and the return of astronaut Shannon Lucid and the beginning of John Blaha's four month stay aboard the Mir space station. All crew members, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. God bless you and have a wonderful flight. Uh, OTC, that's been work. Thanks very much. You've done a great job on the Atlantis, and we'll see you in about 10 days with a crew swap. Yellow is go for ETLH2, pressure station. Coming up on about 90 seconds from launch. One minute, 30 seconds. This flight marks the 79th Space Shuttle launch. And we have three engines ready. At the T-minus 31 second point, Atlantis's onboard computers will have control of all vehicle functions. T-minus one minute. All systems are go. T minus 45 seconds. T minus 40. T minus 35 seconds. 30 seconds. 25. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15, 11, T minus 10, 9, 8, we have a go for engine start, 5, 3, 2, 1, we have booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on the fourth flight to dock with the Russian space station. Houston now controlling. Rolls complete. Roger, roll Roger Atlantis, Atlantis, and your MPS H2 out message is a deucer only, no action. Copy. The roll maneuver is complete aboard Atlantis. The vehicle is now in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 160 nautical mile orbit. Three engines uh, aboard Atlantis preparing to throttle down now as the vehicle prepares to pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. 
Atlantis says velocity is approaching 900 miles per hour. The vehicle's already two and a half miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 6.6 .6 miles. Atlantis Houston, go at throttle up. Copy, go at throttle up. One minute, 25 seconds into the flight, the three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle. About 35 seconds away now from uh, burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters aboard the orbiter. Atlantis is 12 and a half miles downrange from the launch site. Current altitude, 18 miles, traveling 2,300 miles per hour. The hydraulic systems, all three of those uh, APUs, auxiliary power units, are in good shape, as are the electricity-producing fuel cells. Standing by for SRB separation. SRB separation is confirmed two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Atlantis Houston, two engine tail. Copy, two engine tail. Affirmative reads and performance is nominal. Copy, performance nominal. Two minutes, 50 seconds into the flight, Atlantis can now reach Zaragoza in Spain in the event of a single engine failure. Uh, all three engines, though, are uh, at full throttle and in good shape. Atlantis is 71 miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 48 miles. Now traveling uh, 3,600 miles per hour. Jets will not damage the station because the solar panels of the space station extend to the sides of where that cone is. One yeah. of the interesting things for us is that uh, the radar of the shuttle, as we get closer, the beam starts to wander around on the structure of the, the mirror, so the information we get back becomes less precise because it is wandering and the angle of the radar antenna is moving so much that the uh, pr precise position between the shuttle and the mirror is not being measured uh, as well by the radar because of the size of the station. So we start relying more on the lasers which are focused on particular points on the, on the mirror. And that frees us up to, to stop using the radar for tracking and